Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Nathan Gower, who's the Managing Director for Australia and New Zealand at Boomi. Nathan joins us today to discuss Boomi's role in the market and the concept of creating a digital nervous system. Thanks for coming along, Nathan, and welcome to the jam. Thanks for having me, Mitchell. It's a pleasure. Awesome. So um, to start off, for a business that hasn't worked with Boomi before, what are your key products and offerings? Thanks, Mitchell. So hopefully most people have heard of Boomi by now, and um, hopefully we can we can continue to get our message out there into the market. So let me first just start with some very basic context, right? The, the ICT spend in Australia and New Zealand is forecast to exceed um, $125 billion by 2025. So it's a huge amount. And I think we're seeing a, a propensity and increased priority around digitization. So how do we fit in with that? So Boomi provides iPads, um, and you know, I hate acronyms, but it, it stands for Integration Platform as a Service. Um, iPads has been, been very disruptive in what was a very traditional marketplace being integration. And we leverage automate, automation by crowdsourcing to intelligently connect all the applications um, silos of data across an organisation. So it really forms that central nervous system for a business. Um, so it's super relevant for every organisation, you know, with that, that prolific adoption of um, best of breed and, you know, SAS point solutions. The, the, the silos of data are growing across an organisation and that's really our mission is, is to break those data silos down um, to enable businesses to, to innovate, et cetera. So um, not just connecting applications and systems, but I guess just as importantly, connecting people into um, the process also is what we do. So how do we do that? We, we have more than just integration. We're a single unified platform, but we also offer master data management. It's all around data quality and data governance. Um, API management, when an organisation wants to expose their data for external consumption. Workflow automation, which is really that, that human involvement element in the piece. And finally, that data catalog and prep, um, which is really a precursor to deliver good quality data analytics for, for real-time decision-making, um, along with a lot, of, a lot of connectors. I won't bore you on the technology, but you know, the ability to connect to, to many, many thousands of, of unique endpoints. And the final piece I'll just add is, is what we do is we deliver it in a low-code capability. So in light of the short, the skill shortage, you know, that we're all facing in the market, that, that low code is, is so critical, not just for, for what we do, but I guess for an organisation looking to adopt any technology, you know, it's got to be a, a key, you know, top of, top of thought, top of mind um, approach in assessing technology. For sure. sure. And um, can you share some examples of how organisations are using the Boomi platform? Yeah, you know, we're really fortunate. So. Um, the, the need to, to obviously unearth data and, and govern data across an organisation is, is not unique to a single industry. So we work across a hugely diverse range of industries, um, everything from you know, financial services, logistics, utilities, resources, life sciences, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that, that requirement around data is ubiquitous across all these organisations. However, what is unique, I guess, across these organisations is the objectives they have, the unique challenges they have, and, and that's where we adapt. Um, so some examples, right, we can adapt to very, very small organisations where they might just have a very, a very basic need, for example, to publish the inventory on a Shopify website, all the way through to large multinationals that may be um, coming to market, <clears throat> excuse me, with, with a mobile app that has thousands of concurrent users, you know, powering and being the backbone behind um, smart city initiatives, uh, smart campuses, um, personalised banking and financial services. Um, so a very broad, broad range of capabilities that, that we have. Absolutely. And what are your um, product development teams um, focused on next in terms of the trends you're addressing? So trends. Um, wouldn't we all like a silver ball to, um, to, to be able to look back and, and have hindsight on what trends really took, took, um, took traction in the market? The, the ones we've, we've um, certainly focused on uh, for 2022 is hyper automation. Um, so automation isn't a new concept, but certainly hyper, that hyper acceleration of automation we're seeing as a requirement in organisations 
at the moment. It's very prevalent based on, you know, coming out of COVID where a lot of things were on hold, that, that predominant skill shortage in the market is really driving that acceleration of, of automation. So automating manual processes across an organisation, um, trans, you know, really finally looking to transform that customer experience is all being driven through automation. And our approach is not the traditional RPA approach, uh, which can be quite brittle, but it's all around um, delivering that central nervous system of intelligent connectivity. Uh, whilst I'm, I'm talking about human resources, uh, workforce agility and staying adaptable is another key topic of conversation in organisations at the moment. So we've always traditionally worked with organisations around providing a 360 degree view of customer. What's changing though is custom well, organisations wanting to focus inwards and, and provide a 360 degree view of their, um, their staff and their contractors. So ensuring that integration of, of technology assets, no matter where an employee is working or a contractor is working from to equip, equip them to make um, decisions with, with real-time data to ensure um, they maintain duty of care, which, you know, which some of them lost sight on with people being remote and preparing them and equipping them to be adaptable for the next change in world events, et cetera. So the businesses don't go through another point of disruption like they experienced through, through the, the recent pandemic. Uh, if anyone uh, watched the federal budget on Tuesday, you would have seen the announcement around uh, a commitment to spend almost 10 billion towards um, cyber, better cyber defense. And so, you know, at a smaller scale, we work with a lot of organizations around data security. Um, so, you know, just cyber attacks and, and so those deliberate attacks are more common in our marketplace than, than a lot of us actually realize. So that, that's crucial. But just as important is that unintentional leak of, of personal identifiable data that, that could have come from, you know, shadow IT working outside of IT. So we really help organisations once again deliver that backbone of connectivity and a single point of control for all the data movement across the organisation. And so that really helps um, give them line of sight visibility into, for example, who is accessing the PII data, how it's being used, um, so that's really critical. And the final um, trend that, that, you know, we're working a lot with organisations and in, indeed we've got a roadshow next week talking about it is, is um, modernisation in the public sector. Uh, so, so, you know, they're all trying to deliver a better digital um, experience for their citizens. Um, but a lot of them have uh, a bottleneck around legacy applications in particular legacy ERP or enterprise resource planning software. So we're really running a campaign at the moment around a five pillar approach to modernization of applications and ERP. And um, you're probably sick of hearing me talk about data now, but it's all around um, releasing that silo of data. So those legacy systems traditionally have a huge amount of, of data that have been built in there over many years. Um, and a lot of these organisations are doing a huge amount of um, manual data entry. So it's really removing those hurdles and, and um, building a composable and decomposable ERP for these organisations to ultimately deliver a better citizen experience and to drive down um, total cost of ownership in the organisation. And in terms of the infrastructure and resources you have <clears throat> in the Australia and New Zealand market? So... Uh, Boomi uh, has been around for since 2010. However, in, in this region, we opened an office in 2016. Uh, and now, you know, the, 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 the growth and, and, and expansion in this region has really been driven off the back of some major wins across some key industries in, in this country. So from, you know, in particular, financial services, government, higher education, et cetera. Uh, my journey with Boomi has been six years. It's, it's been a phenomenal journey. We, we uh, if my memory serves me correctly, had less than 5,000 customers in, when I started. Uh, we now just hit the 20,000 paying customer mark in, in a matter of, of less than six years, which is phenomenal. I uh, have over approximately 12,000, 12, sorry, 12% 12 of the Fortune 500 global companies, uh, about the same in ASX 100 companies. Watch that space carefully. We will definitely be cracking that open in the near future. Uh, actively looking for good talent and good humans uh, to continue our, our growth story in, in this region. And um, on the back of that, 
um, if an enterprise end user or someone wanted to engage with Boomi, what's the best way? I'd encourage you to visit uh, boomi.com. Uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn also. So connect to me on LinkedIn, Nathan Gower. And also I'd recommend you, you go and look at, uh, you know, a huge partner of network, network of partners we have in this region that all bring their unique set of skills to really tackle and provide a strategy for every organisation out there. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Nathan, and we look forward to hearing more from Boomi in the future. You're welcome. Thanks, Mitchell.